Hello and welcome. I'm Arima and this is Halls of Torrent. Halls of Torrent just recently released its 1.0 on Steam, which is actually kind of amazing because this Halls of Torrent came out right before I started on YouTube. And I've kind of been playing it off and on my entire YouTube career in the background. And I played a couple episodes on YouTube as well, but it's just very cool to see this game finally out. I have played a little bit on my own. I didn't want to start with a completely fresh save because we have seen a bit of the of this game in the past. So what is Halls of Torment? It is a bullet heaven inspired by old school Diablo. And due to that inspiration, it is a bullet heaven very heavily focused around difficulty. You do still get insane and crazy over the top builds, but the game is also designed to be a little bit harder. There are more heroes than this. I think there's one or two new heroes that are new to the 1.0 that I'm missing, but uh, only a few runs I actually managed to unlock most of these heroes. So we're gonna go ahead and pick my, my favorite hero. Uh, this lady, uh, I'm actually gonna do this. So this lady is the Beast Huntress. She starts with both a uh, spear and a hound. The spear, uh, I believe, infinitely pierces. No, it pierces sit skies. It's up there in the top right corner. P pierces sit skies, does a ton of damage, applies frost, which also like explodes and stuff like that. She's a very cool character. Um, there's a bunch of NPCs you can unlock and everything like that, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I am going to check this guy. Yeah, he had something that I picked up before. And I'm going to just very quickly do my, my loadout. Um, basically, f after you come into the dungeon and, uh, extract, you'll eventually get this guy. He's going to be the first NPC you unlock, the Wellkeeper. And what he'll let you do is whenever you kill a boss and get an item, you can decide to extract one item per run to unlock that item for future runs. And these items are kind of like, literally like Diablo equipment. I mean, this actually looks like, uh, one of the shirts from Diablo 1, um, one of the legendaries. And then these kind of are one of your two forms of meta, one of your three forms, I guess, of meta progression. And But these meta progressions I find more interesting. It's not just percent stat increases. They're interesting things like multi-strike, which is like uh, you either attack multiple times or you throw multiple projectiles, that kind of stuff. This elemental resonator is new to me and I just got it last run. It says whenever I burn, spark, or frost something, it has a chance to apply its own stack again. So every tick of burn can apply more burn we have this guy over here who unlocks potions basically this is your rerolls your banishes etc you can unlock these pretty quickly and then the scripter just seems to be hey this is the items that you need to collect still the last thing to talk about before going in is there is generic meta progression i've grabbed a little bit of it but not too much um it's not interesting i'm not going to show you um and then we have quests. This is basically just a crazy amount of achievement trackers. There's one for each dungeon. There's one for each of the dungeons. There's one for each character. And then there's some generic ones. And they do a bunch of interesting things. So sometimes they just give you gold, which is useful to spend on meta currency and stuff like that. But sometimes they give you new unlocks. They give you new abilities. Um, it's how you unlock most of the characters. They'll unlock new items. So the challenges are really interesting to complete. We are going to be going to one of the newest maps. I think there's one more map with the 1.0. I'm not 100% sure. But we're going to go to one of the newest maps with this character. And we're just going to see how well we can do. I normally actually play this on my Steam Deck. So it's weird for me to be controlling this with mouse and keyboard. Um, but yeah, you can toggle auto aim with right click uh, i'm actually going to turn on auto attack and then i can right click to uh auto aim i think actually i'm not sure about that. okay so i have auto fire on in the in the uh menu but i have to press r to go between auto aim and not i on my steam deck it's actually really nice you have two joysticks right whenever you press your left joystick it fires in that direction, but if you don't press it, it'll auto aim, and it's just really nice. Um, we're going to take attack speed because it's pretty important for us to just get to attack speed here. I'm actually going to turn on auto aim for a moment. Uh, grab some strength. Our first few level ups are going to be pretty boring. We do actually have a really nice item right now. 
um, I think it's this ring, yeah? So, uh, the ring says whenever we're damaged, it'll cast Holy Light, which I'll show you that just showed up. And if whenever we're not damaged, sorry, the, the Holy Light will heal us, but whenever we're not damaged, um, and we're full HP, it'll drop a power up instead. It's possibly one of my favorite items because a lot of characters don't have good sustain early. Force channeling here gives us more pierce. So we'll take that. And then at, at base, it kind of is your typical bullet heaven. Um, in fact, I'm actually just not going to auto aim him at all. But it's at base, it's your very typical bullet heaven. One of the things I like about this game is that uh, you do kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing. And a lot of times, <laughs> honestly, I, I lose more than I win for the most part. And I kind of love that. Like, I still win a lot of them. And then later, unfortunately, I don't have it unlocked right now. All of these suck. I guess we take help. Uh, I don't have it unlocked right now, but there's a, something called agony mode, which is basically like the hard mode. And the hard mode is actually really fun. And one of the reasons it is so much fun is because the better you do, the harder the game gets. And that's really cool. So you can't just overpower the game because the, if you do overpower the game, the more enemies you kill, the quicker, the stronger the game gets. We're going to go to proficient stance here. So these... These things that have the barriers are unique to my character, or not barriers, the borders are unique to my character. So dedication has two different versions. If I take one, I'm locked out of the other. This one gives me pierce and health. This one gives me movement speed and regen. I think they're both present right now, right? And then proficient stance, the alternate for proficient stance here of ruthless is relentless. And that gives multi-strike and attack speed. Multi-strike will give me extra projectiles. So I don't want to take this. I think I'm going to take the movement speed and regen. So I do plan on moving around the map a lot. Because what I was about to mention is that this game has objectives. And they actually added objectives. Like, basically, there's a there's a secret quest on every map. Sometimes not so secret. Um, that gives you a way to kill the boss easier. Because the bosses have just, like, millions of HP. And they're actually very, very hard to kill. They're, they're bullet hell challenges. Um... But I don't know where this one is. So we're going to have to move around a little bit and look for it. I do want to get a few more levels first, though, I think. Because if I run away from the experience too much, the whole thing is based on timing. So the longer I spend on the map not killing things, the harder the map's going to get, but I'm not going to get any stronger. So I do want to be careful about that. Just get a few basic levels here. Um, move speed will help because we do plan on moving around the map a whole bunch. I actually really like move speed in this game in particular because, well, I mean, I, I like move speed in general. I'm, I'm kind of a movement gamer, but in particular because, like, you have objectives, and if you see in the bottom right and then the left side, we have objectives that are hundreds of meters away, and getting to all of them is actually kind of difficult. There we go. There we got our Relentless. That's attack speed and multi-strike, which will give us a chance for extra projectiles. We get above 100% uh, multi-strike. We'll start getting even more. And we just had a super attack, or whatever it's called. I don't actually know what the, the upgrade's called because it never freaking tells you. Berserker's Rage uh, upgrade drop because we were at full HP. We're going to check the other thing here. So we've got crit chance and force or damage and area. We'll take the damage area one. And as you level, you'll get higher versions of upgrades available. It's basically every 10 levels. So you'll get level 2 upgrades at level 10, level 3 at 30, etc. I, It might be 20, 30, 40, 50. No, no, here we go. Yeah, so level 5 is, is strength 2. Okay. And then every upgrade upgrades... Maxes out at five, with the exception of uh, uh, your secondary items, which will hopefully pick up a secondary item if we ever manage to kill this fucking satyr here. Go ahead and get a crit chance. So the upgrades I'm getting right now are kind of the generics that are available to anyone. They get more interesting as we unlock more stuff. And there is, once you start getting into agony, you have the ability to unlock these special charms for each character 
And you know how I said that I had these proficient stances, right? That are unique to this character. Well, I can unlock those to put on any character as an item so that while I'm leveling, let's say, Sorcerer, I could get the proficient stance for Huntress, which is really cool. We'll get a little bit of regen. I just really want to kill this guy. And then once I kill this guy, I'm going to go start exploring because I should get an... If I remember correctly, I'll get an item from him. Um, I'll get a, uh, an ability scroll. And the ability scroll will give me a second ooh, secondary attack that will be happening as well. Let's see. More regen. I just did a bunch of damage. Regen's not super great with the item I have because the item's going to keep me pretty healthy anyways. But... It's also really good to be at full HP. So if I'm missing like 10 HP, I don't want the game to be like, oh, or the item to be like, oh, we're going to heal you instead of giving you that 10 HP back. There's a free multi-strike. And we'll go ahead and pick up this. There was a, a loot all magnetism thing that started at the beginning of the map that we we're just going to pick up right away because I don't want to have to head back north. So I don't think our objective is north. Normally the objective for each map's there's like some clue to the objective that starts really close to the start of the map. Let's see. We took damage in area last time. <clears throat> I think we'll take force and crit this time. I might need to check to see where my crit is. In fact, I might actually do that real quick. So my crit speed right now, our crit chance is 40%. Okay. So I actually have a pretty good crit chance. Pretty much every character is going to level crit just because it's one of the ways to get extra damage. Um, there's not too many ways to get extra damage. Like, just flat extra damage. Finally doing... Oh, here we go. There's something going on with this. Some sort of, like, light puzzle. Okay. Let's figure it out. Again, I've never done this one. So, uh, excuse me if I don't get into my first try here. What's the opposite for dedication? Force versus... I want force because I want more pierce. And then we're going to take a few hits to take this. Dryden Breath, Phantom Needles, or Radiant Aura? Radiant Aura is kind of a little aura around you. Dryden Breath is probably one of the secondary ability... Uh, sorry, one of the best secondary abilities. It's just kind of amazing. Phantom Needles is a really good physical crit thing, which would build well with this character. So we're going to take Phantom Needles. And now you'll see these little pink needles shooting out of my character as well. So I'm going to take the healing and regen over here. And then... We don't know where this lights wants to go, but I imagine it's not going to want to go into a wall. So we're going to check to see where it's pointing. Again, we want multi-strike, so we're not going to take that. We're going to check to see, see where it's pointing and see. Aha! Okay, so that's probably correct then. It probably doesn't want to go back. I'm going to guess it's not in the same. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'm going to guess it's not in the correct position right away. Um, I'm going to turn on auto fire real quick. Uh, this actually looks like that might be... I'm just... Nope, it's going into a wall. Okay. I'm going to a pillar, that is. I just turned on auto fire for a moment because my attack speed's so high that if I don't turn on auto fire, I'd probably waste some shots. There we go. Multi-strike. I need to touch it again because it is facing the wrong way for sure now. Kind of a bit of a hard moment on the wave, though. And again, the enemies will spawn infinitely, but the type of enemy that's showing up and how and like what uh, configuration they're showing up in is based on the time. And that will always be the same if you're not on agony. On agony, it changes. We want to level up our crit needles every time we get the option to until it gets level three. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Okay, this one's going this way. Okay, we got that right. I doubt, again, I doubt it's going to be right the first time, so we're going to move here. We're going to ignore that boss for now. Phantom Needles every time. Once we get to level 3, we can stop leveling it. Ah, uh, There's a healing spot behind me now. I kind of want to go back for that. I only get those every 30 seconds. Okay, this wave is getting a little harder now. Uh, let's see. Parry is pretty good. What parry does is um, it gives us block. Basically, block checks before defense. And if the block value is higher than the damage you would have received, you'll block 50% of... You'll have a 50% chance to block it. Um, 
So basically, it's like actual Diablo style block, right? Um, we moved it to move south. We moved the laser to move south. So let's try south. See if this runs into a wall or something. We're going pretty far. But this might not be correct. Yeah, I don't feel like this is correct. We're going too far. All the other ones were much closer together. Ugh. It gets really hectic really fast. And there's a lot of different enemy types, which I also love. Let's see. Let's say crit chance. That puts us up to 50%. What does that do? Unholy strength. That's double damage because of our necklace. Give us another enchantment because we were at mass HP. At least we were mass HP when it triggers. We're not at mass HP anymore, but we were at whenever it triggered. Uh, let's go back and hit this healing spot real quick. We'll take damage for the healing spot, which seems counterintuitive, but we do get regeneration off the healing spot as well. So it's not as counterintuitive as you might think at first. We're getting like no experience right now, but we're still killing. So if we get a magnetism later, we'll get all this experience back. And we're already at least strong enough to survive on our own, so I'm not as worried about it. I think this is the wrong direction, too. We're going too far. There is level three needles. We can stop grabbing upgrades for that unless we specifically want those upgrades. Okay, and this is why. So here's the second scroll. Because I have a level three ability, one of these three options will always be an upgrade for that level three ability now. So now I have Phantom Split, which is one of the two upgrades I have unlocked for Phantom Needles. This says that whenever I did a critical hit with the needles, they split into multiple projectiles. It's actually a really good upgrade. Out of the two that I have unlocked, that's the one that I almost always want. I just took a shit ton of damage. Uh, in fact, I think I might take defensive things for a little bit there. I'm just going to take Thick Hide here, which gives me just flat defense. Just reduces incoming damage. Nothing special. Typical video game at Defense Fair. I'm going to go poke this lantern here or this light trap and see if we can get the next step of this. If you break vases and such like that, there's a chance that there's uh, collectibles and upgrades in them. Not upgrades. Um... Power-ups. That's the word I was looking for. I'm going to go ahead on the assumption that these are never correct whenever we find them. I'm going to turn it twice. Looks like it's going into a wall, so we know which way it goes now. Oh, hey, there's the book that's explaining the entire thing. Might actually go and read that. Among a plethora of twisted experiments and cataphysical creations, one particular contraption garnered the attention of the power first. The Dissonator Monument, a monument of destruction, powered by a maze of concentrated light rays. It is said that even the Lord of Discord would succumb to its strike capabilities. Yeah, so that's basically telling us, hey, Lord of Discord is the lord of this part of the dungeon. And um, if you were to power this monolith, which we kind of figured out on our own, um, it is going to ruffle his face off. And it actually will. It'll reduce, like, his mass HP by, like, half or something like that, which is really convenient because he'll have, like, millions of HP. There's a new elite boss thingy. And we're joking about a maze of things. The monolith thing is right over there, but we can't turn it in yet. Um, let's guess this way. It looks like it's always the Nets room over, so if we go more than a room looking for the Nets one, we know it's we've chosen the wrong one. Let's see. I like the force for extra pierce. Oh, maybe this is done? Yeah, it's done. Okay. So now this is... There's like a lightning thing here now. Oh, ah, that's actually really cool. I don't want to just sit here, though because I have a couple more things to collect on the map, but we'll, we'll come back to there. Um, let's take the regen. Yeah, so we're going to go off to the left here now and collect this scroll, which will be another ability scroll. You can tell I've never done the Chamber of Distance before because I just found an achievement for being here for 20 minutes. 
sorry, until there's 20 minutes left. I think we're actually just going to take a moment and kill this guy. Uh, maybe not. He's actually pretty tanky. But I do want to get this other ability scroll to get a second ability going. Now that we, especially now that we have our first one upgraded. If you pick up these ability scrolls before you have the ability up, an ability upgraded to three, you will actually lose out on um, getting the opportunity to upgrade abilities. Especially if you just, there's a limited number of these scrolls per map. There's a couple bosses that drop them and each level has one or two scrolls on the ground that you will always be told where they are. So you, you do kind of have to plan around, well, what do you want like six abilities or do you want three abilities that are fully upgraded? Some of the upgrades are way stronger than getting extra abilities and some of them just frankly aren't. Let's see. I want physical ones or frost ones. They're not offering me frost, so I'm gonna re-roll once. There we go, Frost Avalanche. Frost Avalanche just sends out four little um, avalanches and it'll also apply frost, which if you remember from the intro, my spear's applying frost, so that's very useful. We're gonna stand and fight. Oh, thank goodness, they marked the monolith. I was actually worried I was gonna lose the monolith. Um, we're gonna stand and fight for a little bit because I want some experience, but let's say at the 15 minute mark, we are going to start running for the other scroll. Possibly, instead of the 15 minute mark, just once these bosses go down. Yeah, go ahead and, again, focus on upgrading the actual ability first. I'm, my attack speed's high enough that I think I'm going to leave it on auto fire for a bit here. Because I'm not going to be able to be as efficient as the auto fire on hitting targets. Okay, we don't want to pick up that scroll. Because I want to get Frost up to level 3 before we pick it up, so we can just immediately upgrade Frost and not have to worry about it. So we're going to grind some levels for a little bit here, uh, and then we will make it to the other side of the map and try to get that other scroll. It will probably be our last ability. Let's see, get some crit chance here. I want to max out crit chance and uh, strength, for sure. At the very least. This is starting to be a lot of projectiles, though, so I'm, I'm trying my best to not take too much damage because I haven't actually gotten a power-up from my item in a little while. There's multi-strike. Always good. In the chaos, it's probably pretty hard to tell how many shots I'm even firing, but I think I'm every once in a while firing three. I'm not 100% sure yet, though. There's my level 2 upgrade for Avalanche. Oh my god, don't die here. Yeah, maybe I need some defensive abilities. Just maybe. Uh, let's reroll. Hey, level three ability for Avalanche. Yeah, so each level will also have two variants for these guys as well. Let's say force range and damage so that the Avalanche kind of goes a little bit farther. We're going to come over here, pick up this to get the heal. And then we're going to come over here and pick up the scroll to upgrade the Avalanche. And this one gives me quick freeze. It leaves trails of ice now. And we're going to leave now. We're going to walk over to the other side of the map. Ooh, hey, that is a magnetism. Very nice. Let's see, this one's movement speed and regen. Let's take that. I didn't kill that boss, did I? Let's see, crit bonus and damage. So that's essentially 20% damage increase. I actually like that a lot. I just realized that maybe I should just kill this boss before I move on real quick damage because he's so low um take extra hp we'll be healing a lot because of our, our healing item oh man 
Um, extra damage on the needles, sure. I said I was trying to take defensive items, and then they're just giving me all offense. It's very hard to pass up all the offense. Uh, crit chance, yeah. Sounds good. There we go, focus him down. And then he's going to give us an item. So let's see what we got. On hit a physical damage, we can do a shockwave. Grants damage bonus based on champions, elites, bosses, and lords killed with spark equipped. Does not reset between runs. Oh, that's really cool. Main weapon turns into lightning. We're going to take this and it's going to go into our bag. And now at the starting position that we were at originally, there is a well. We're going to head to that well on the way towards the next scroll. Now that we've killed this boss and we are going to extract this item which will mean that we have now permanently unlocked this, assuming I actually get to the extraction. Even if we die, we will have permanently unlocked this item for all future runs to be used on all characters. Um, which, in my opinion, is a lot more interesting than just basic meta progression. Now, mind you, this game does have basic meta progression as well. I just tend to not use it very much. I get a couple points in it because I will say that the game is balanced around the meta progression to some degree. So if you take no meta progression, it will be difficult to win at all. It's not impossible, but it does become very grindy to try and win, especially on Agony. You'll probably be fine um, whenever you're not on Agony, but if you start doing Agony runs without meta progression, you'll notice that it's a little bit more difficult. It, it, it's, it feels an unintended level of difficulty if you have absolutely no meta progression. Um, so I, t I tend to, this is one of the few times I make an exception for myself and I'm just like, yeah, just take a little bit. Don't max everything out, but just take a little bit. Okay. We're going to touch this and we put this here and we send the item up and that's all you gotta do. And that's disabled for the rest of the run. If I remember correctly, there's a thing I can do later. I think it's on agony that I have to do it where I can get multiple of those per run. Um, but for now I only have one. So, and we're going to head over to this item scroll, get a third ability. And then from that point on, we're probably going to go back to the monolith and sit there and just try and survive. Um, we've kind of got all of our objectives done very, very early, which I very much enjoy just getting them out of the way. Um, and then we're just at this point, we'll be on full. Uh, maybe damage and area. Yeah, damage and area. We'll be on full bullet heaven mode. If you guys are enjoying the episode and enjoying watching this game, you know, feel free to leave a like and a comment. I'm saying this in the middle of the video because I normally say it this at the end, but this time I have a specific request of our backlog of games is getting rather small and I've been considering making more series, short series. Like I recently tried to start a series of RL craft and nobody watched it so that's fine that's entirely on you guys um i mean what i mean is like if you guys you know watch what you want to watch right um but if you guys want to see more of game of a game like this or any game you know let me know in the comments and i'd be happy to play more of games and complete them more often instead of just doing a one-off let's tries uh i don't know what to take here so we're gonna take google blitz just because Google Blitz is like it's it, that's the German word for ball lightning and it's just cool it does exactly what it's, it says on the tin if you know what Google Blitz means which is ball lightning so it just sends out ball lightning we are going to take a probably circuitous path back hitting as many of these crates as possible so we would like to get a magnetism to collect all that loot that we ran away from and then we're going to head back to the monolith but yeah, my point is, is that uh, if you guys want to see more of this game or more of any particular game that I've played and not completed, you know, let me know in the comments and I would be, it's a good time for me to start up a, a short series. Um, I still want to do Let's Tries like maybe once a week, but probably not every Monday and Friday. I have recently just posted on the community page a schedule for what videos I'm going to be uploading. So if you're one of those people who's here only for Cataclysm and wondering why I'm not uploading Cataclysm right now. Well, that's, for example, that's Wednesday and Saturday. But I'm pretty much always going to be hard, playing hard games. So if you ask me to go play some 
easier game or just like a typical bullet heaven, it's unlikely that I'll play them. The only bullet helms heavens that I find interesting are the ones that are more difficult, like this one. Like there was multiple times in this run I could have lost and I know what I'm doing. I've probably played this game for like 40 hours now. It's easily one of my favorite bullet heavens. I also have a fairly strong item build right now. Um, so we're going to sit next to this monolith because I really like the golden lightning that it has. And uh, it's going to murder things, I think. We'll take a Google Blitz upgrade. Might as well. But yeah, there's several games that I have been interested in that I don't succumb to the YouTube algorithm, per se. I kind of do whatever I want, but I will take cues from the YouTube algorithm. If I post a game and 10 people watch it or 100 people watch it and that's it, then I'll just be like, okay, that's fine. Next game. It's not really a big deal for me. Oftentimes, I'll go and just play it on my own instead of putting it on YouTube. And there are just some games that, you know, they're either out of stock or, or sorry, out of favor or not really popular right now that just people aren't terribly interested in watching. However, it's hard for me to tell sometimes whenever people are interested in like a whole series. And it's kind of hard to, to know when to stop and sit down and be like, okay, well, I should make 12 videos about this and just play this whole game, right? So anytime you're watching any of my videos and you're like, hey, I want to see more of this, literally let me know. It's the best way to get more of it. Like, just actually freaking telling me. I don't like any of this. So... Then we'll take block strength. Block strength doesn't really do anything until I have a bunch of it. Um... But I think it's still a good thing to take. I would like to get Toodle Blitz to three so I can grab that scroll below me. I'm supposed to be standing near the monolith, but I I walked into the scroll by accident. Oh, I got a second upgrade for Fan Phantom Rift. That's really, or Phantom Needles. That's actually really good. That's rare to happen. The second upgrade can just show up randomly. It even tells you in there that, hey, you have one upgrade with an ability, an open slot for a second one. I wonder what level you get the second one at. I don't actually know off the top of my head. Looks like it's six. A lot of this used to just be like you had to figure it out, but they've recently updated the UI to make it a lot more obvious, and I appreciate that. I didn't notice those icons up there until literally just now, for the record. I had not seen them at all. Go ahead and take some crit chance. But yeah, I play games, especially harder games, every single day. I probably play four or five hours of games every single day because I have a job that makes me lets me work from home. But I can kind of just do whatever I want. And uh, I only put maybe like a third of what I play on YouTube. So, you know, it's sometimes hard for me to decide what's worth sharing, right? I also definitely take game suggestions, and if you want to really get through to me on a game suggestion, we have a Discord that is linked in the uh, description of every single one of my videos, and I talk on that Discord all the time. I, I I hang out with a bunch of people there. There's a there's a small handful of people who have been hanging out with me consistently there for the last few months. Um, the feats, the village. Oh, that guy's name was the village. That's actually pretty cool, because that means that like. And he was like Legion, but like he was just like a whole bunch of people. Oh, that's cool. I like that as a name. Very, very Diablo-esque. Let's see what we got. Electrostatic treads generate shockwaves while moving. Shockwaves deal 100 damage, have a 20% chance of applying spark. That's great for a different character. Necromancer's clutch summon skeletons. This is actually a very powerful item. And then Ring of Fire changes your main weapon to fire. We're just going to take that. And then I'm going to immediately unequip it. <laughs> but I just... I don't want the other items. So I just took one that sounded good. We're going to see if we can upgrade uh, Frost Avalanche again. And we're also going to stand there. And yeah, we just... Because we've been sitting at 100 HP for so long, we just had a crazy amount of damage for a second there from one of the... Uh, three power-ups that we get every 30 seconds 
We just obliterated that boss of it. I think we're going to finish off crit next. Oh, there's a double damage. Yeah, if you can stay at max HP, this item is really good. But if you don't stay at max HP, it can keep you alive as long as you play well. Beast Huntress Stance. So I can either get plus 30 base damage and minus 60% overall damage, or I can get plus 60% damage and plus 30 physical damage. So this, this evens out, but makes me very focused on physical. I like the very focused on physical thing. So we're going to do that. So basically that evens out to be 60% physical damage, but anything that's not physical just got reduced by 30. And I'm kind of fine with that because I had focused on physical anyways. It does mean though that my ice, which those little white shock waves are is what the ice is. Every so many stacks, um, the ice will explode. Might as well take parry. The ice will explode and do damage in an AOE. And I think however many stacks, there's something, I don't remember exactly how it works, but there's something to do with the number of stacks on them whenever the ice explodes equals to how big it is or something like that. At this point in the game, I am actually going to take the loot fingers because it starts to get hard to pick up all of the, the gems. Grab crit every time it can. So lightning does basically like a tick of damage, the spark thing. Does a tick of damage every stack for the number of stacks you have on. So if you have 100 stacks, they would do like more damage per tick than if you had 10. And each time it does a tick, it drops some of the stacks off. Um, like the number of stacks on a target reduces. Frost does a little AOE explosion. And fire is the one that is just like, it's fire damage. It just burns over time. I don't know why it's giving me fire affinity. Normally it only gives you an affinity if you have that thing, but I don't think I have any fire damage. It might be confused because I had fire damage on my weapon for like a second, and then I took it back off. So I think I might have cheesed the system there. There's Shootle Blitz 3, so we're gonna walk over to the scroll here. Oh, we actually have multiple scrolls. And we'll get Shootle Blitz Attraction. Now, instead of walking around randomly, these little lightning things will walk towards enemies. And now we're putting spark and lightning on. If I find the thing that says converts all summons to frost, there we go. This is a summon, I believe. Let me see. I'm double check. Um, chain lightning, elemental projectile area. No, but my dog is a summon. So we're going to do elemental surge, ice. So now our dog does ice damage. So just really stack up those frost stacks as fast as possible a good secondary source of AoE damage for us. We also want to take that item that I somehow basically dodged. Uh, oh yeah, that's going to be a, a flask. We won't be able to extract flasks for very often until we get farther into the game, unfortunately, because we'll be wanting to extract items and the flasks only come from like later bosses or later mini bosses, I should say. But yeah, we're doing pretty well. I think we're definitely going to win this. Some of these later waves get pretty intense, like uh, the four minute wave and the two minute wave are generally pretty intense, but I think that we're clearing fast enough and we have enough AOE to survive it. There's Frost Avalanche six. Okay, but it didn't give a up another upgrade slot. Maybe I don't have another upgrade unlocked for Frost Avalanche six. We're learning how this works together this time because I honestly don't know. If you know, feel free to leave me a note in the comments because I actually didn't know if there was a specific... Here's Matt's crit bonus. If there was a specific interaction on how to get a second upgrade. Because I know if you have three levels of an ability, you always trigger the first. Okay, so we're level seven now and it still only says one. Maybe I only have one upgrade unlocked. Because you do have to up unlock... You always get one upgrade um, unlocked by default, but you do have to unlock the other one by basically just using it. So let's do Kugelblex and let's see if we can get Kugelblex to six and see if that does anything. If we got another boss, I'll pay attention to his callouts. 
Apparently, we've recovered 5,000 HP in one run. You know what? Let's just grab a fourth ability. Ooh, Meteor Strike. I like Meteor Strike a lot. But we do actually already have Spark. So I think we'll take Lightning Strike instead. Oh, you know what? I should have taken something that was physical. Because I have minus 30 base damage to everything that's not physical. I didn't think about that. Oops. Uh, just take some... Lightning is going to never be very strong then because it has minus 30 base damage, which means that all of the damage multiplicatives that I got, like the 50% from having rank 5 strength, all that stuff, is just going to be way less effective on it. Because the base damage itself is so low. The ice that I'm leaving behind is actually largely covering up my ability to see this guy's callouts. Um, we have reached that point in the bullet heaven, which happens with most bullet heavens, where my attacks are so insane that I have a hard time seeing the enemy attacks. Except in this game, you actually have to dodge enemy attacks. There's like callouts and stuff like that. Okay, I was worried that that was just going to keep going. We're going to walk out of it this time. And we're going to upgrade Phantom Needles every time we get a chance because Phantom Needles actually, I think, is doing a pretty significant chunk. If you're ever curious, if you hit Escape and go to the menu down here, you can actually see the max DPS and total damage of all of your things. And Phantom Needles is doing 15,000. It is actually my best DPS item right now. Now, mind you, just because its DPS is good doesn't mean it's killing every anything. I think it's just that it hits the most enemies. And that's what's going on there. It's still good, though. Don't get me wrong. It's still great. He's going to drop a new item for us. Um, I don't need a lot of movement speed anymore, so I might take one of these. Yeah, let's take the Elven Slippers. We're going to put them on before the menu closes. I have like a second there to try and put them on as the menu animation plays. Start maxing out Harry next. Because the last few waves, the last four minutes here... The last few waves will get pretty intense. And there's a chance that I will need as much defense as I can to avoid just getting crunched under the waves. Yeah. Force and range on needles. Just make make the best things we have better. Always a good plan. Once you get all the objectives done and you have all that stuff done, unless you're going for a specific thing, it kind of just becomes, I would say, a typical bullet heaven will, while also being still harder. If we were on agony right now, I would probably be pressured because, again, the better you do on agony, the harder it gets. Like, you actually, like, level up the area. You level up the area by doing well. But because we're on normal mode and I don't have Idony unlocked yet again. Um, sorry, I don't have Idony unlocked again because I did reset my save. Uh, it does mean that I'm not that pressured right now, unfortunately. But I do promise you that uh, uh, as a hard gamer, I can definitely certify that this game is one of the harder of the below heavens. You're not going to be sweating like you are in, you know, like a competitive game or, you know, a Souls like or something like that. But, uh, you know, once you get to higher the higher difficulties and some of the harder challenges in the game, yeah, it, as long as you don't, you know, completely overpower your builds, and maybe that's fun for you. Who knows? If, if you don't overpower your builds, then it'll 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 be a challenge. You actually have to pay attention to what you're doing. You, you, you actually have to play the game. It's pretty fantastic. Kind of just taking whatever with my upgrades now. I think I have what I want. I think I've maxed out Phantom Needles. I just saw upgrade level 10 for Phantom Needles there. And these guys... I mean, we can't stand still, but you can basically never stand still in this. We don't want to anyways, because we get blocked from moving off of our boots. But... Uh, we are pretty close to the to the fabled standstill level of power that you can get in a lot of bullet heavens. 
again, I'm at the point where pickup range actually suddenly sounds good because I'm spending all of my time hunting down these little crystals. One really small sound design decision that they made for this game that I really like is that as this bar fills up, the sound of the crystals being looted pitches up, which means that you always, without looking on the left side, you can always tell how close you are to the next level up. Just by listening to the actual sound design itself. I love little details like that. We're at a minute 20 and we're still not pressured. So, uh, yeah, I think we're definitely going to win. We'll get to see the boss. And we'll probably see just a cluster truck of up for, of unlocks that I got from that's at the end. There is actually another alternate upgrade path for this character that focuses on getting the dog stronger. But you have to unlock it, and I haven't had it unlocked yet. But it's actually uh, kind of fun. You can There's a bunch of summon abilities as well, and you can focus on the summon abilities and then make the dog really strong. Okay. It is... This is what I was talking about. The last minute or so, they literally just throw every single enemy and every single projectile and every single thing that the level has ever had at you all at once. And they just try really hard to kill you for the last minute. So we're just going to take it. Any upgrades we get are going to be defensive upgrades. Because this is just kind of a lot. There's a lot of fire on the ground, so I, I kind of want to keep moving to new areas so I don't have to step backwards through the fire. Oh, hey, I just got an achievement with Google Plus. Maybe it's because it's the first time I've ever used it on this save. And uh, we're only about 12 seconds out from the boss spawning, which will kill all of the enemies. So we just need to try and survive. Uh, base up. Took a hit there, but immediately healed. And they're all gone. Okay, we're going to stand in this circle. Yeah, look at that. The monolith is just tearing the boss apart. And reducing his mass HP drastically. So normally this guy would have, like if you're seeing the damage he's taking, he has tons of HP, but the monolith is helping me immensely because I took the time to finish that quest. And there you go. You pick up a torment shard and uh, it does actually teleport. If I had it active, you'd see it nearby. It teleports the well to you at the end of each match so that you can extract. If you're not near it, you can extract an item. And then once you walk into the portal, you head back to town. I'm really happy that I won this run because this was a first try for YouTube. We just got a shit ton of quests done. And uh, yeah, this has been Holes of Torment. And I have been a Rima. Ooh, I unlocked a new character. I didn't know what this is. Um, The Landschnet. That's German for something. And he's a projectile character and has like a really high piercing and has an Archimus. Multi-strike has no effect on the Archibus. Single projectile. Interesting. So it's... Oh, it does 400 damage? Oh, I actually really like that. I'm probably going to use this guy for my next run. But yeah, it's a pretty fun game. I'm enjoying the crap out of it. It's a really good game to just sit down with if you enjoy hard games and your normal bullet heaven is a little bit too mindless for you. So uh, check it out. If you want to look at it, there's a link in the description for the 1.0 Steam page. And... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have, leave a like, comment, and uh, subscribe for more hard games. Goodbye. Goodbye.